Hello everybody, this is Eddie Gabor, CEO and co-founder of Key Advisors Wealth Management. Please sign up for our YouTube channel for up-to-date videos like the one we are sending out today on our views on the markets as well as the economy and what we're doing for our clients, so following our data-driven process to hopefully make more right decisions than wrong. At the end of the day, it's about educating yourself so that way you and your families can make the right decision that you think is best for them. I thought this video would be very timely due to this big bear market rally that we've seen. Uh, and there's no mistake, this has been a very healthy rally, especially in some of the highest short interest names. And now the debate, just like it's been in every one of these bear bounces is, is this the start of a new bull market? Or is this just another trap in the middle of a bear market? And the other debate is, are we going to have a soft landing or are we going to have a hard landing? Because both of those scenarios would paint a completely different picture in regards to what the market reaction is going to be. Right now, in our opinion, the market is pricing in a soft landing, which is why you're seeing this rally. And it's a healthy one. Make no mistake about it. Um, and the consensus is starting to more and more go in the soft landing camp. Uh, we, unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because I'm certainly not a perma bear. Um, I prefer bull markets than bear markets, of course, but unfortunately the data right now continues to support our thesis and our opinion that we actually are not going to have a soft landing. And I firmly believe we're going to know by summertime who is right. Um, and the main reason for this and why, it's not because we're trying to be stubborn, uh, we just follow the data. And sometimes it takes time for the market to meet up with what the fundamentals are saying. And I truly believe that fundamentals matter, but I also understand that there's been many times in history where there's a disconnect between fundamentals and what the market. And yes, the market is not the economy. However, the market does care about fundamentals. And in my opinion, it fundamentals always wins. And so when we take a look at the fundamental backdrop as to why we haven't changed our stance and why we continue to be bearish, even though we're seeing an amazing rally here, are several reasons. Let's first start with the yield curve, okay? You look at the three month and 10 year yield curve, many times, and there's no guarantees anything in this business, but when that yield curve is inverted, it is almost always signaled a recession. And we have a yield curve inversion that is one of the widest in history. And yet I continue to start to hear the narrative that this time is different. The yield curve has it wrong. I still hold a lot of weight on that. Now you can't just look at one dynamic, right? It's a component of many things. But the bond market right now is completely disagreeing with what the stock market is saying, at least in the month of January. The other thing is not just the inversion of the three month and 10 year, but let's take a look at what the long-term rates have done. You know, the long-term rates in our opinion are foreseeing what future growth is going to be economically. And the 10-year rate has really fallen off of a cliff. Uh, we're at about 3.7 right now as I shoot this video. We were up at the 4.4 range not too long ago. So we've seen a big drop in rates on the long end of the curve. Um, and again, to me, that is signaling that we should be preparing ourselves for a pretty sizable economic slowdown. Now, when you look at the ISM numbers, the manufacturing data, it continues to get extremely weak as well too. Again, another warning that we are heading into a recession. So you have the ISM data that is supporting, in our opinion, in a big way that we are seeing a much faster slowdown than what the market's pricing in, in conjunction with the yield curve. And now you got the consumer. So all you have to do is look at what these earnings reports are telling us. The earnings reports, if you listen to the calls, continue to point to the fact that the consumer is showing great weakness. Whether it's the Microsofts of the world, the retailers of the world, whatever part of their retail business, many companies are showing a significant slowdown. And what that's telling us is the consumer is almost tapped out on discretionary items. Now, the main reason for that is because inflation has been pretty sticky. I mean, we can get whatever data the government wants to throw at us, but at the end of the day, when you talk to families and you ask them what it's costing them to go to the grocery store, to fill up their tank, to take care of the things that their kids need, it's really, really expensive. And 
that, in our opinion, is not going to get better in the next six to eight months. So yeah, we're seeing some cooling on the inflation data and that's extremely welcome. But when you look at real life expenses, I'm pretty sure if you survey 100 families, they're not going to tell you that there's a significant slowdown in what it's costing them to maintain their standard of living. And at the end of the day, we are a consumer-driven economy. So if the consumer is weak now, and we believe they're only going to get weaker because we're not going to see this miraculous turnaround in the next few months, in our opinion, that means that earnings that are tied to consumers are only going to get weaker. And I continue to hear the narrative that we're actually going to see earnings potentially accelerate in the second quarter. Um, I don't buy it. Not yet. Let them prove us wrong. But this consumer better make a big turnaround and start spending money. All you have to do is look at what their savings rate is now and look at how they've blown through savings. Credit card delinquencies are starting to increase. Car payment loans are being delayed. You're starting to see companies lay people off. These are not signs of the beginning of a growth cycle. This is signs of the beginning of a recession, in our opinion. And now let's take a look at the cost of credit. And this is what has me most concerned, okay? And again, I'm not a, a popular opinion right now, okay? We are in the minority right now in regards to our concerns with this economy. But let's just take a step back and think about this logically. If interest rates have doubled and more than doubled in less than 12 months, and we have some of the largest corporate debt on our balance sheets in history, as well as commercial loans on commercial buildings. These loans are not locked in for 30 years like a family can on a home mortgage. These loans are coming due and they're gonna be coming due every single year. So as a company or as someone that owns commercial real estate, if your mortgage or your loan goes from 4% to 8% or 12%, that's gonna take a big hit on your bottom line. The cost of capital going up is inflationary for a business. So we could see inflation, headline inflation go down. But at the end of the day, if the cost of doing business is higher and consumer demand is getting weaker, how can earnings accelerate in that environment? The worst case scenario for a business is higher expenses and lower revenue. And that's ultimately where we certainly believe is going to be extremely clear over the next few months when we get first quarter earnings coming in and second quarter earnings. And that's going to lead, in our opinion, to GDP going negative. And that is going to be when the writing is on the wall, what direction we're heading in. And I believe the market will catch up to that when they understand that this is not going to be a soft landing if we are right in our thesis. So yes, we are still sticking with our market call that we're gonna hit new lows before we hit new highs. And we've told our clients this, we believe that 2023 is going to be the year for the big buying. We're sitting on a hefty, hefty cash position, okay? And we're comfortable with it. We are very comfortable with patience, right? We didn't short the market for clients because if you do that, these bear market rallies will rip your face off and you'll lose all your capital. But it's kind of nice to be sitting on a large cash position, getting a decent yield, and our clients have been extremely happy with our patients because they agree with us. This is not their first rodeo. These folks have seen recessions before and they agree with our market thesis. So you have the bond market working against you. You have earnings, in our opinion, that's going to work against you. We've got ISM data working against you and you got the cost of credit. And lastly, the other narrative that we completely disagree with is to be bullish because the Federal Reserve is going to cut interest rates. If you think the Federal Reserve is going to cut interest rates, then you actually agree with our market thesis of a recession. Because in our opinion, the only time they cut rates is when the economy needs stimulus and they need to cut rates to stop the economy from continuing to bleed and go down as well as the capital markets. I do not believe the Fed is going to cut rates they have to make sure that they have squashed inflation. And that means that, and they've said this in their press conference, they would be more comfortable with over tightening to make sure 
that inflation does not spike back up again versus pivoting too early. And I'll end this video with this. And I don't think enough people are talking about this. So I shared with you that the cost of credit is one of my biggest concerns because I'm afraid we could potentially have a credit event. My second biggest concern is the Fed pivots too early. If they pivot too early to appease the stock market, yes, we will probably start putting cash to work because we don't want to fight the Fed. We're not going to talk out of both sides of our mouth like many people do. However, that is a huge risk to the market for 2024 if they pivot too early. Because if they pivot too early, in our opinion, you'll get an acceleration in inflation in the back half of this year, and they're going to have to come in in a Volcker-like moment and absolutely crush the economy. And you can have a double dip recession in that scenario, as well as a double dip, I'll call it crash, in the markets. So for the long-term prosperity of this country and the markets, I think it's better for this country to just deal with the recession this year, let the Fed continue doing what they're doing, whether you agree with it or not, to eliminate the chance of a 1970s style inflation having a second spike because that would be detrimental to families, businesses, the markets, the economy. And that's a world that I hope and pray that we don't have to live through. So it's, all, it's not all doom and gloom because again, I think if we're right, we're gonna have some amazing opportunities. And then the next several years should be extremely prosperous for the markets as our economy gets back on its feet. So time will tell if we're right or if we're wrong. And if we're wrong, I will come on national TV and admit that I was wrong. And it's probably the first time I'm happy I'm wrong because I don't want to see the type of recession that we're expecting to see. At the end of the day, as a fiduciary, I have an obligation to my clients and I'm not going to paint this rosy picture when it looks as bad as it does. But we know we'll get through it. And when we do, we'll be rewarded for it in our opinion. So that's it for today. I hope this video brought some value to you and your family because at the end of the day, the decision has to be yours in regards to what you do with your hard-earned capital. Thank you very much.